you've landed inside Launch Street, the business innovation podcast, where we interview top innovators out there shaking things up so you can innovate, differentiate, and get further, faster. Since you're here, we know you're the type of person that recognizes the importance of unlocking your innovation advantage so you can compete and win. And now, your host, the person that has worked with leading companies like Disney, Procter & Gamble, Aero Electronics, the U.S. Army Research Labs, and Red Robin on upping their innovation advantage, Tamara Gontor. Hey, innovators, Tamara here. So I'm kind of hoping that you have a question for me a challenge, a situation, a scenario, something that you'd like an outside perspective on, my perspective on. Well, if you do, you're in luck. If you go to our podcast page on my website, you can record a question for me. It is just one button, one click, and bam. The link is in the show notes. Just go to gotolaundry.com and click on podcast. We have gotten some great questions already, and I am so looking forward to hearing yours. And hey, here's the thing I want you to remember. If you have a question, a challenge, a roadblock, a hurdle, whatever you want to call it, kind of around innovation or getting buy-in for your ideas or getting people to change their behavior, all of that stuff, you know where we play, business and human-centered innovation. But if you've got a question around that, somebody else does too, which means we all get to benefit. So why don't you be the first one to go ask that question? We'd all appreciate it. All right, today's podcast is all about focus and leadership, so we should probably focus in and get to it. Our guest, Tristan Wright, offers business owners more than just buzzwords and vague advice, as you will see on the show. He shows them how to grow their business while reducing workload, yeah, that spoke to me, and keep them focused and accountable along the way. This is why he actually calls himself a Sherpa. We talk about things like um, how momentum is the killer edge needed in business. We talk about how to get focused. It's a really great conversation. Let's dig in. Tristan, thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. All right. This is my favorite question to ask people. What's your favorite innovative brand or business and why do you love it so much? All right. Uh, People are going to hate me for this because it's probably the most well-known brand, but it's Apple. Uh, Just because they're so good at subscribing you and involving you into their vision and into their culture and ecosystem. It's yeah. I can't see anyone else that that builds a brand or has built a brand as good as Apple. So I have to ask, cause I've heard Apple quite a bit, but I have not heard because they bring you into their ecosystem and their culture, which you're absolutely right. Now that you say that, I think, Oh yeah, of course. Why do you think that matters so much, so much in today's business world? Because people want to be involved and engaged. So people want to understand uh, that there needs to be a purpose. And and if you're engaged and enrolled in something, you're going to be able to, to generate better results personally and professionally. And so for Apple, they're, they're so good at engaging you and subscribing you into, into their culture and into their vision which is in turn, in turn increases the value of their brand. Yeah, they're incredible at it. And I think it's interesting. I was talking to an entrepreneur the other day launching a business and he said, do you think it's okay that I put myself on some of our Instagram posts while we're kind of, they're still in, in prototyping phase. And we were yeah. having this conversation. I was saying, look, I think what's important now to people is to be a part of the story, whatever that looks like for you. That's not necessarily everyone needs to have, you know, themselves in it, but we want to feel connected to the things that we buy in a way I think that we never have before. Correct. Which, yeah. Which brings me to you. So tell me, I want to start with this. Why do you call yourself a business Sherpa? And maybe explain what a Sherpa is. Not all of us have climbed Kilimanjaro <laughs> and know what a Sherpa right. is. So believe it or not, in Mount Kilimanjaro, even though I climbed it last year, they don't have Sherpas. Uh, Sherpas oh, they don't. Uh, so that's, I made that up and it was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's so, so I, I personally climbed with my partner, Aaron. We climbed Mount Kilimanjaro last year. I didn't even know that. Uh, That's funny that I said that. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, um, that in at Mount Kilimanjaro, they have porters, but oh. uh, Mount Everest uh, has Sherpas. Is, is Sherpas. So, oh, you learn something new every day. Yeah. I, I didn't know until I went to Kilimanjaro last year. So, uh, a Sher- Basically, I, I call myself a business Sherpa. I'll give you the easiest way to describe it is my 30-second pitch. I'd say, yeah. say to someone, 
Would you go and climb, if you were to go climb Mount Everest, would you climb Mount Everest by yourself? No. What would you do? I would get help. Uh, I would probably Correct. get a team of people who know what they're doing and can help me. Exactly. So people that have been there and done that before. Yeah. Um, because that's, it's going to help you get there the quickest, most efficient, simplest and safest way. So I say to people, if you're going to do that for, to climb Mount, Mount Everest, why wouldn't you do the same thing when you're building your business? Why wouldn't you get someone to help you that's been there and done that before? Someone that's fallen off the edge and got back to the top. Uh, and then they say, yeah, that makes sense. And then I say, well, basically I'm a business stripper. I've been there, done that. And I help, I now help others get to the top of the mountain. That is their goal. Let me ask you a question about that. Do you think we have a hard time asking for help? Um, because we think we should know the answers already, or just because we don't know where to look. I was just having this conversation with someone the other day about how like when you're trying to move your business or your team, you know, whether you're internal or an entrepreneur to the next level, it's like we're expected to know all the answers. And there's this little voice inside of us that's like, you need help. But then you don't know where to go for help. Yeah. So uh, the, I'll answer the question or the, the phrase around, I don't know where to go for help. There's, yeah. so, uh, there's so much white noise out there. There's so many people marketing um, or, and companies marketing themselves as, as people or businesses that have experience and skill sets. Right. But in reality, uh, they're just good at marketing. They're not actually good at, at delivering. Building. So that, end, yeah. that ends up rubbing off on the end consumer uh, by saying, I don't know where to go because every, it's just white noise and, and there's, no, there's no one actually providing cut through and specific marketing to their actual requirements. So that is one of the reasons why people are like, I don't know where to go. Yeah. Right. And there's all, there's too many options. And to your point, half, most of them don't deliver. What are some of the, yeah. What are some of the biggest challenges your clients face? You know, when they, when they call you, what do they say? That they're lost. They, they've, they've had a lot of success or initial success but they don't know what the next step is. They don't know what the next stone to jump onto or the next rock to jump onto is. They've, they've, gone, they've, had, they've got to a million dollars, $5 million, three staff, five staff, whatever, but they don't know how to take the dependence on the business away from themselves. So I, I have so many questions. I'm sorry. I was like a pause in moment because I was like, wait, which question do I want to ask first? <laughs> there's there's um, loads. Yeah. I know. There's so many. There's so many. So what do you, th when someone calls you with that, I guess my question to you is how do you unpack that for them? How do you help them see what they really need? Because I think oftentimes in those situations, I know I've been in that situation where I've gone to the next level in business, in my business and been like, oh. I don't know what to do. I know the point B is where I want to go to or X, whatever it is, but I don't know how to get there. Or I think how, what I need to do is probably not right. Cause it's what I did to get where I am right Not yeah. where I'm going. So how do you help them think about that? Just to even unpack the challenge itself. So I, I've spent so much time on that recently, uh, re reviewing my previous business experience and, and my clients, um, experiences and, over the last six months, I've, I've written a, a business manifesto. So basically what my business does and how they do it. And out of that, I've come up with a couple of frameworks. And put simply, um, the f very first step is we need to determine your ultimate objective. What do you want to achieve out of business and life? What, where do you want to be in two years' time? So what happens when I figure that out? Does the path simply become clearer or is that at least like, hey, now I know what help I need? So you get clarity on that and then that gives you, gives you the ability to reverse engineer a roadmap, um, to, to build a strategy, to understand where to focus, where not to focus. But, so once you understand your ultimate objective, it's a lot easier to say no or, or it's a lot easier mm. to stay on, on the correct path. But if you don't have clarity, you don't have a vision, or you don't have that ultimate objective, you end up going around and around in circles and getting lost and procrastinating and wasting time uh, and, and trying new things all the time.
So you're, you said it very quickly, but I just want to touch on it for a second. You said, you know when to say no. I think that's the biggest challenge oftentimes that a lot of us in leadership of any kind faces when we start to, and actually it's true at all levels, when we start to um, spin and we don't have that clarity, we say yes to everything. Like let's Correct. hope one of these things work. And then we're exhausted and overworked and not focusing on the right things. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's quite, quite simply because you don't know where you want, you don't know specifically where you want to go. And that's right. when, when you end up getting burnt out, you end up uh, not saying no, because you end up chasing your tail to make money. Right, exactly. Um, I want to bring it back to you for a second, a little bit of a different way, because it, as we were talking about at the beginning, there's a lot of noise and I think false help out there, false Sherpas who are yes. not. <laughs> yes. like, all, so if someone all, tells me they're awesome. a Sherpa for Kilimanjaro, I know they're lying to me. Um, <laughs> okay. but, but, you know, there's a lot of false help, people who haven't actually done it. And one of the things that it's one of the, I don't know, my soapboxes is about people who teach it but haven't done it. It drives me nuts, actually. <laughs> and what, it really does. I have a real issue with it. I, don't get me started because I will go off on like the we, biggest we rant. Could, we, could, we could have a whole other episode talking yes. about that. Yes. Oh, I've me written crazy. multiple articles about it. Have you? Doesn't it just drive you mad? Like, why would you listen to someone who's never actually done it? And who gives you the right? Like, it, it, it's, it's a lie. Who gives you the right to talk about it? when you're not yeah. even the one who've experienced it. And I'm sorry, some people are great orators, right? Or great like collectors and that's great. But you, but if, unless you actually experienced it, I don't think you understand the realities of what does and doesn't work. That's my soapbox. There you go, Tristan. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's actually okay to do it, but as long as you're transparent with the fact that you don't actually mm -hmm. have that real, real life experience and that your marketing um, is that says this is, educational and observational based not uh not experience based it's my soapbox i just really drives me nuts but yeah, but yeah, so which could, is why i want to talk about it for hours <laughs> clearly clearly i just i don't get it um so so which is why i want to bring it back to you for a second which is because before becoming a coach right you built a business yeah what do you what do you think were some of the pivotal transition moments for you in your business that helped you get to the next level and the next level oh uh, um and maybe the framework is like, what were some of the decisions you made or things that you did to help you get there? I'm not thinking necessarily like our marketing strategy was this, uh, but that's fine. how you thought about so, the business. So I, I set this business up at 23, 24, um, and I ended up exiting it at 28, uh, 29, I think. And it was a, a million dollar or seven figure business at that stage. Um, in that whole period, I had, built it up to be super successful, um, seven figures. Um, then I had a phase where it dropped back. I was um, 200 grand plus in debt. Uh, my wife had left me. I had no idea how to run this business and, and make it operate without me. Then I, I grew it back to the point where it ran without me and was making a profit. But the, probably the biggest thing I learned was I was getting in my own way. I, I had an ego. Yeah. Like at 26, I was, I was running a, a seven-figure company. You obviously can, knew everything. Yeah, I thought I knew everything. Yeah. Uh, but, but as soon as the, some form of roadblock got in the way, um, no, I didn't know everything. I didn't know how to deal with, with roadblocks. And, and at the end of the day, it was my ego and, and my blinkers. So the biggest learning is get out of your own way. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And I'll tell you, I have a colleague who is successful but could be a billionaire. But the problem is he makes decisions based on his ego. Yeah. And I see it all the time. And I tried to tell him that, but his ego didn't hear it. So no surprise. <laughs> um, but, but you're absolutely right about getting out of your own way. And I think it, it's also, I think that trickles down into things like being willing to let go of control of some of the things that you're doing and having a team to do it or realizing that you don't have to be the one that has input on everything. That's what your people are for. They're smart. Um, I think there's That's a lot of ways that that ego translates. That's why it's the relates back to your ultimate objective. What do you want to achieve? And once you know what you want to achieve, what's the best way to get there? And the best way to get there might be letting go of control. Yeah, right. So, but you're right. It goes back to your objective and saying, what am I really trying to do here? And is my ego serving it? And the case yes. is usually no, right? Is the answer ever no. yes? Yes, I'm, having an ego. <laughs> I'm going to call you out on one word there, yeah. trying. 
It's my least favorite word. Oh, what did I say? What am I trying to do here? Oh, uh-huh. what will I do? Don't, here? don't do use prefer? the word try because it means you're never going to get there. You're never going to do it. Uh, fair enough. So, is it a, a little Yoda? Do or do not. There is no try. That That's it. So, uh, it's actually, <laughs> I, it's I like that. Mind, mindset I, thing. So, because people know when you're trying, you're not actually achieving. So, I call people up when they use the word try because it means you're not going to achieve. So what would you, what language do you train your clients to use? Because I would imagine, because I just said it in passing and didn't even realize it. I yeah. have to imagine that's pretty ingrained in most of us. How do you get your clients to, to speak to themselves and to the world differently? So it comes down to one, one saying. Uh, it's a saying, it's a, the title of the book that I'm writing at the moment. Think what is possible, make possible mm-hmm. your reality. Mm-hmm. So think glass half full and always use the half full side of the glass. So is that saying things like I am X, yep. Y, Z, right? Yes. I, w- I don't know. I don't love will because will to me is too much future for yes, me personally. It's very fairy. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Will is like someday. Yeah. Someday. Yeah. 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 How interesting. Okay. So let, let's talk a little bit more too. That was great. Thank you for calling me out on that. I didn't even realize I said it. It's not one of my favorite words either. So just goes to show you oftentimes we're our own worst enemies and we don't even know it. So thank Correct. you. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about why focus is so important. Uh, why focus is so important. It's a, that's a, that's a really good question. So you need to know your ultimate objective and to be able to achieve it, you need to focus and, and get rid of the fat away from, away from that. And if you're not focusing on your ultimate objective, you're not going to be able to achieve. So, so I, w- I want to share a little story with you and tell me if this is kind of what you mean. Um, this is a very tactical thing. So mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a fan of sticky notes, putting to do my tasks on sticky notes because it on, on the wall because it keeps it present to me. I can take them off when I'm done. Like there's things about it I love. But yep. about a year ago, I realized I had like 100 sticky notes on the wall and all of them were important and across a million different things. And I realized, oh no, like I, I've got too much going on. I'm spread too thin. And we kind of, the team got together and we had a conversation and we really skinny down our priorities. And then like, if I look at my wall now, I have like 10 sticky notes. Not that I'm not less, I'm less busy. Don't get me wrong. Like I still mm-hmm. have a lot to do, but that difference in like the hundred sticky notes to the 10 that really matter was a huge shift for me and actually really hard to do. Is that kind of what you mean by focus of like, hey, know what you need to get done and get that done versus Correct. doing everything? Correct. So the way I talk to my clients is I, I say, is this making you more than $300 an hour? If mm. not, give it to someone else. Oh, I love that. I'm going to write that down. $300 an hour. Especially because my hourly rate is more than that. So if I can't do that, I really shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, dep- depending <laughs> on the person, um, it might yeah. be $100 or it might be $500. For me, yeah, my hourly rate's, what, $500, $600 an hour. Yeah. Um, so anything less than that, I delegate to my staff. I love that. You know, the other, I don't know if you've read the book, The One Thing, but one of the things, have you read it? No, I haven't. I so will I butcher it. I'm add it to my it. list. Yeah, no, it's great. It's one of the people from the Keller Williams paint company. I, I, unfortunately, I can't remember the name. I'm horrible with names. But the one thing is the name of the book. And one of the things he talks about in it, and this is paraphrasing his line, but what's the one thing that if I do that, all of the things become easier, irrelevant. Yes. Um, and that's really helped me focus on what's the thing I really should be doing, not all the things I could be doing. Yeah, that, that's basically exactly the same as what I call ultimate objective. Yeah. So yeah, focus on that one thing. Yeah. Um, so you wrote an article that I just wanted to ask you about. It was titled, Momentum is the Killer Edge Needed in Business. I'm fascinated by the power of momentum and how it can yeah. kind of make or break things. Like you see it in sports all the time, but I think it's true in business too. Talk oh, to me yeah. about, about why it's so important. It's, so momentum, flow, all these sorts of things. Uh, once you get into that, nothing can stop you. So for for me, the last I'm I'm going to use myself as an example. Um, the last twelve weeks. Uh, so two weeks ago, we had our first child. Um, oh, congratulations! Thank you very much. Uh, but about twelve weeks ago, I'm like, okay, I need to build momentum to to increase business revenue, to increase my productivity, to increase my happiness. Uh, so I 
I just knew in 12 weeks I needed to achieve X. So I said, Jim, three times a week, I'm doing this. I know that helps my mental health. And I know that once my mental health is stronger, I can then focus more on what I want to achieve. And by building those routines uh, and having absolute clarity on where, what I wanted to achieve in the 12 week period, I was able to slowly but surely build, build that momentum and become a lot more efficient with what I was doing. So much so that I can now, what, from five weeks, sorry, 12 weeks ago to now, I can, I'm doing what was in, I was doing in five days in three days. Plus, from a financial perspective, I, I'm, I've increased my revenue by 30% in that 12 week period. How do you, um, first of all, that's incredible. Congratulations. And that's incredible because when you have a new baby, you need some hours back. I yeah. mean, it sounds easy, like, but they sleep all day, but oh my gosh, like, no. it's exhausting. So, yeah. Considering yeah, I, I work from home half the time as well. So yes, I'm popping me too. in and out to looking after, looking after Bub supporting Erin, my partner. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not, uh, I don't sleep all day. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I believe me. People used to say to me, oh my God, how one of my kids were born. They're, they're 11 and, and almost 15 now. But when they were born, people would be like, oh my God, how great. You could like have your baby in your arms while you're working. It's like, no, it's not how this works. Um, <laughs> nice. but, the, yeah, but the question I wanted to ask you about is I think sometimes the struggle and momentum is you start strong and then you, mm. you know, peter out, right? It's like, you wane, it, it, it gets harder, something gets in the way and you have to get it back. What do you do, what's your personal advice and what do you do in those moments where you start to drift off the momentum, you feel it and you need to pull back? Uh, typically that's gonna be a mindset thing where you're not actually tr trusting the process and you haven't been able to measure any of the results that you're getting or you haven't taken a step back to see what you've actually achieved in, in that time frame. So. Um, this is all about celebrating the wins. So you, you take a step back every week or two and, and think, oh, I've made this tiny bit of progress. I'm, ac I'm actually building momentum. And mm. imagine if I keep making, uh, making small amounts of progress, what that momentum, what, how much momentum I'm going to keep building. But it's we're hardwired to question ourselves in a negative manner. So yeah. it comes back to, questioning ourselves in that positive manner. I like that flip. And in fact, I was did the podcast I was doing uh, earlier today. We were talking about that, that we're so mean to ourselves and we're yep. so negative um, way more than we'd ever say to anybody else. Right. You'd never say to your partner what you say to yourself. Correct. You're like, that's mean, but you'll yep. say it to yourself. Um, and I like that, that I love that kind of concept. Will you give me an example? Like if I, if I'm having that moment, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm lazy. I'm tired. I'm overwhelmed. You know, like I, I just can't get this. I can't make this happen, right? That's kind of that moment where the momentum yep. shifts. What can I say to myself instead? So get a piece of paper and use yeah. evidence-based. Um, over the last week, write down the times that you were lazy and the times that you were not lazy. And nine times out of 10, you can see that you, you're actually uh, more productive than you are lazy but you're focusing on the lazy points as opposed oh. to the productive points. Right. Like 90% of the time you were actually on point, but that 10% is what drags you down. Correct. So then you've got this piece of paper that's evidence-based that says you're not lazy. It's just, you're focusing on the lazy bits. Right. That's so, what I really like about what you're saying too, is that's evidence-based, not just like, just feel it, which I, I'm all for the soft side, but more than that, um, I, I think it's important that we actually are able to see the evidence of the power and the things that we're doing. Totally, totally. Because um, so whilst life coaching, business coaching is, is really good and all this personal development is really good, there needs to be a tiny a component of evidence-based as well. Yeah. So because the, the human mind, non-evidence and uh, theory gets you so far, but you need you need that evidence to be able to make a proper switch. Yeah. So I want to ask you about that too, because as we were talking about earlier with the kind of getting to the next level, when you don't have that evidence yet, what do you, how do you weave that in? Because I, I really appreciate what you're saying. And I don't know that I'm that good at it either. 
I tend to get wrapped up in where I'm trying to go and how I'm not there yet. Uh, just remember that if you're not there yet, just remember everyone's got their own journey. Don't live on someone else's goal plans. Live on your own goal plans and know that you're actually mm -hmm. progressing towards your own goal plan, not someone else's. Love that. So I, I want to ask kind of a little bit of a different question, but I think it relates to the evidence-based part as well. Um, what do you see that stops people from maybe being more innovative or kind of trying things in a different way, especially given sometimes the way we do things traditionally don't work? Uh, living to other people's expectations and other people's realities. Why do you think we do that? Because I guess we're trained. Yeah, we're trained to, or we're brought up in a way that we look, what's the best way to describe it? We look for acceptance from others before we look for acceptance from ourselves. Mm. Hmm. That gets us nowhere, does it? Correct. It might get you well, so I, far, but it won't get you where, where you yeah. want to get to be happy. Well, and I think your evidence-based thing just kind of perked me up a little bit on that too, because I think we are actually more innovative than we realize, but we have 10% of the time where we've done the comfortable thing or we let fear take over, or maybe it's more, yeah. but we forget about all those other times that we actually were innovative and dared to kind of step up into leadership or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's um, just the way that, I don't know the scientific terminology, I do, but I can't remember. It's just the way the brain is wired that yeah. we, we go back to our primate times where, yeah. where it's safer to be negative in a sense. Yeah, yeah. no, it's the, um, it's the lizard brain. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. so yeah, 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 no, no, no. I don't. Because you've been shutting your lizard brain down, you're like, I don't acknowledge you, lizard brain. Um, yes. But it's a lizard brain and it's a reticular activating system, which is basically like this thing that kind of filters our world to try to make it comfortable and what we believe yep. on the inside. And, you know, it's all those things. So you're totally right about that. Um, before we have to go, I just want to make sure we do this. What, where can people go to learn more and connect with you? I've got a website, evolvetogrow.com.au. You can find me on LinkedIn at LinkedIn forward slash, I think, Tristan Wright. But yeah, just Google Tristan Wright Evolve to Grow and you'll find me on all the oh, different sessions. Awesome. So um, I'm very much looking forward to this last question, particularly given your business experience. And by the way, I have to say what I really kind of resonated with and appreciated about your story was that you had success and some massive failures in there. And mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, we don't talk about the failure side enough. Um, we yeah. talk about, like, we, we put the successful people on the magazine covers, but we we ignore the downs that happen with, with yeah. being innovative and doing things differently. So I appreciate that you mentioned that given your incredible experience in business um, and what you do today, what's your final piece of advice for innovators on Long Street? Think what is possible, make possible your reality. So give me one tactic to do that today. Like one thing I can do. What? Okay. It's really hard to give you a tactic. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to give you a strategy, but it, it, it's quite I'll take a strategy. I was about yeah. to say try, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's quite literally go away, spend some time thinking what you want out of life and what, if you had no limitations, what you want out of life, what you want out of business, what an ideal business and life would be. You know, we don't, I don't think we spend enough time doing that. We're so in the slog of it that we have no time to think about what we even want. So we just keep moving forward. And um, we think we're moving forward in reality. Mm, probably, great way to say it. Backwards. Yeah, no, you're right. We're either standing still or moving backwards. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. And, and then we don't realize how we got there, you know? Correct. Like we're just there. But, and, and don't you think uh, it really requires more than like an hour on Friday, you know, like to really... <laughs> Think about it. Yep, yep. I um, I go for a walk each morning. Uh, I get up about six, six fifteen. Walk along the river. Go get coffee, and that's just my me time. It's me. It allows me to calibrate who I am, where I am, and what I want. And I, I didn't used to do any of this sort of stuff. I thought it was all airy fairy and for um yeah. for weirdos. But yeah, yeah, once yeah. I got into it, it's like yeah, this actually works. 
So Well, it's been fascinating to me over the years when I look at the people that I admire for their business success, what they have in common isn't their business strategies. It's not like how they built their team. Everybody was different. Mm -hmm. It's really the mindset and the willingness to think about their own potential and possibilities and to actually spend some real time doing that. Yes, that's it. Uh, It's actually spending time on themselves and taking a step back um, and and developing themselves first. And then, so looking after the the owner, the, the person first, and then looking after the business second. You know, it's almost like the individual version of a company, right? So companies, we've now kind of really learned that companies that focus on their employees get the customers. And I think from a leadership perspective, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm I'm speaking in Malaysia next week Uh um, in front of a thousand business owners. The the topic is around leadership and how ownership within a business drives results. So getting Uh each individual person to take ownership and enroll in the company's vision. And once that happens... The individual gets results and the company Company gets results. Isn't it interesting? I mean, it used to be such a drive on outcome, outcome, outcome. And I think we finally turned a corner where we, where we realized actually, I mean, all companies are a bunch of people. So at the end of the day, so if we actually take a step back and focus on ourselves, we'll get to those results actually better. In fact, probably exceed them. So there's a saying, I think it's from Brian Tracy, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Yeah. So you focus yeah, so on, on culture and people, um, and then you can implement strategy. Do you think that's why your clients come to you? Are they looking to kind of finally focus on themselves and to get the result, business results because of that? Um, I actually haven't thought about it at that, that level or that angle, but my clients will come to me because they know they need help. They just don't know what help they need. And, mm-hmm. and from there, I guess I'm able to pick their brain and spot the help that they need. And a lot of the time it's them, even though I'm a business coach, a lot of it ends up being personal as well. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you say that I don't do a lot of one-on-one coaching. I'm very like, you know, four slots and that's it just because my business model is different. But in those four people, when I have them, um, I'd say 65 to 70% of what I'm doing isn't the business of it. It really is the personal side of it at the end of the day. Um, and cause they're so intertwined. I have no, I, no problem with that, but you need one to have the other. So, yes. um, but it's, but it's interesting to your point. Like it's, I, I think they come going, I need help doing this in business. And then when you start to kind of pull back the layers of the onion, there's a lot more that needs to be dealt with to get to that. Correct. Correct. So a lot, a, a lot of the initial engagement will be on the person and then we get to the business. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, Tristan, thank you so much. This has been very enlightening and I, it just, it's the evidence-based thing just, I don't know why I I find that so amazing because in some ways it's so obvious, but it made me really think about, Hey, I should track how many times I'm lazy or, you know, versus productive or innovative versus status quo and really see. And I hope everyone on Launch Street does that because I think we'll really see what we're really capable of and how much we actually do and don't give ourselves credit for. So Tristan, thank you. That was, that was fantastic. My pleasure. I've had a great time. Thanks for hanging with us on Inside Launch Street. If you know someone that is truly ready to unlock their innovation advantage, have them join you on Launch Street. Discover your innovation advantage. Build a team of high-performing innovators and ignite ideas and solutions that create massive impact. G-O-T-O, LaunchStreet.com. Remember, innovators, if you don't take the leap, somebody else will.